Okay, well, my name's Gabe. Thrilled to be joined by uh, all three members of Yola Tango today. Um, Ira Kaplan, Georgia Hubley, James McNew. We're here also with Phil Morrison, uh, acclaimed film and video director. We're here to talk about uh, the 25th anniversary of Yola Tango's seminal album, Electro Pura, as well as the classic video uh, for Tom Courtney, directed by Phil Morrison. Um, we will have a special guest later in the programming, Paul McCartney of The Beatles, will be joining us to say hello. Since we've got Phil here, I guess a good, good a place to start as any. What do you, and, and Ira as well, remember about the, the, the days leading into the momentous uh, film production of, of the Tom Courtney video? What comes to mind first? I remember the uh, suggesting to Phil that we reenact I think it's the opening scene from the Dario Argento movie, Four Flies on Grey Velvet, and Phil looking at it and thinking it would, it's a fine scene from a movie, but a terrible idea for a video because it wouldn't move quickly and nothing happened, but it had a fly on a snare drum. Phil had, had some bad luck uh, attempting to direct an ant in our uh, summer video. So, Perhaps he didn't want to get back into the insect world. So he came up with the idea of us opening for the Beatles. Since the song is called Tom Courtney and it harkens to that time period and it has the lyric sitting in the arms of Paul, Eleanor Braun, all of that, it made me think of the Beatles and what could be the worst possible gig a band could ever have but to, reunite, to have to open for the reunited Oh, to get to they, open for them, but to have to. I think say the worst possible gig would be to reunite after all that time and play the Mercury Lounge. Come to think of it, that's not that far fetched. To like to make it, you know, a super special event, right? So was was it not supposed to be clear that it was the Mercury Lounge in the video? No, I don't mean we were obscuring that, but I just meant that that. Um, we, it was the Mercury Lounge because they said yes. Yeah, and there's a shot of the Mercury Lounge. Uh... I didn't, yeah, I didn't mean that we were hiding that fact. I just meant, you know, I just meant that, that had, if we had had the wherewithal to say at Wembley Stadium or whatever, <laughs> then perhaps that's where it would have taken place. Well, I mean, you know, the Beatles had been away a long time, quite frankly. So it might feel like a little presumptuous to open at a bigger place. So let's start at the Mercury. I think that was kind of a grounded decision that they made. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. One thing that's nice about this anniversary, I'll just mention, is that I think this is now the first time that the video is online with like some real, these more decent resolution, like not not like a rip from 120 minutes or whatever, and so it, it can be seen a little bit better now in all of its rich detail. <laughs> That's a lot of detail. Well, it's awesome to see all the, even though you, it goes by so fast, but all, all how gritty New York City looks, you know, 25 years ago, just from the little that you see. At what point did you realize you were shooting like enough footage for a, a two hour movie and the only way to get it into four minutes would be to make it go by like di at that dizzying speed? once we were editing and, and maybe at the time you know we said something like well people have vhs machines now they can tape it and pause and see all the outfits you guys are wearing now that we have vhs we did seek tom courtney's um participation he was doing a play called moscow station at the union square theater so he was in he was in new york i took a note to the stage door left it for him asking if he would like to play the Beatles manager. Just a couple of days later, I got a phone message at my production company saying that a man named Tom Courtney had called to say that he uh, appreciated the offer but respectfully declines. <laughs> and, um, so I never got to talk to him. Maurice did a great job playing uh, Sir Christopher Gerard, the manager. Does that mean that Tom Courtney himself would have worn that mustache? Yeah. Well, That's awesome. I would have let him, I mean, I would have let him make the decision that he made. It's just occurred to me, I think this notion of having a music video 
where people are just talking on top of the song the whole time with, with subtitles. I think that was a kind of a new idea. <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard to yeah, remember. I think you're right. I don't, I mean, I don't think that was something like, oh, this is another one of those videos where it's like that. Um, anyway, that just dawned on me. All right, I'm starting at three, two, one, go. Oh. Hello? Hello, son. This is booking agent Bobby Romeo, and I'm calling to offer your band, Yola Tango, an opportunity to open for the reunited Beatles. What's your answer, yes or no? The actual Beatles? How many people read to the part that Clyler ended up getting? No one. I thought of him right, right away to play this part, and I thought he did a terrific job. David was, had done a lot of videos, including a lot of videos for, Mat for Matador at that point. Um, so we must have shot him first. I think we shot him first, and then Ira had to work around David's improvisation. That sounds great. It's great that my clothes are exactly the same 25 years later. <laughs> and your features. I know. We still have a poster, don't we, somewhere? Yeah, we do. Posters and tickets. Right. For sure. Yeah, no, this was a perverse decision. <laughs> so much fast cutting to devote so much time to Colin dancing. Yeah, Jim Romeo from Ground Control Booking at the time worked for uh, Bob Lawton, our booking agent, and Tom Sharpling. Did Tom introduce you guys at Tramps huh. one night as this character, Big Andy Rigg? Wow. I don't remember. I think he may have. I think it was a like a drive time disc jockey character that he had been working on. <laughs> and I think he may be wearing the same fake mustache that Maurice Moneris, who plays the Beatles manager later, later wears. Uh, I think we only had one, one mustache. Oh, right. And then Rich Sigmeister and Dan Cuddy as the dueling Eggman. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it still makes me laugh. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, my God, the cat. Oh, man. <laughs> that cat, that cat beat the shit out of me. That cat drew blood uh, all day long. I was, I was bleeding through the sleeves of that yellow turtleneck. That was diabolical, that thing. Oh, my God. Did we get the tunnel to let them film us paying our toll? No, no, that was all completely, uh, we, we just stole that. And I'm guessing... It was meant to be meaningful, right? The idea that you could be the band that gets to open for the Reunited Beatles and yet still not have enough money to even pay the toll. Or that was meant to be. Yeah. I didn't think about the social commentary. <laughs> I remember like, like we had like the real life version of that scene where we're going through the Holland Tunnel and just trying to coast on the glory of being the Beatles opening band and maybe we could just get in for free. But on that Johnny Cash tour, as we were driving from Atlanta to DC as fast as we possibly could. There's like no cop would give us a ticket if we t if we told a Southern police officer that we were about to go perform with Johnny Cash, we would get like a police escort like from interstates. So, I mean, we never proved that yeah. theory. But it would have been just our luck. probably for the best. It would have been just our luck. There would have been somebody who had been at the Atlanta show yeah. at Heck Bus, yeah. and in fact gave us like <laughs> you know knocked out our tail light and gave us a ticket. For us. Yeah. I know who you are. <laughs> is that the closest to this in your experience as a band? Like, is that the biggest person you ever opened for? Well, I'd say well, no. I mean, yes, it, it is, but closer to this is playing with Yoko Ono. Oh, sure, of course. <laughs> how, how so? I yeah. mean, <laughs> experiencing some of that, just like, just that kind of just insane electricity that any you know any beetle or beetle adjacent activity that was a bunch of remarkable i love the crowd shots so much of everybody's faces i could I, I could just watch a loop of that that's so great a lot of rock and roll luminaries jeff and steve from salmon skin as you just mentioned right. alan licht many of the members of spent Classic WFMU DJ Terry T is in the background of a shot. Chris O'Rourke, Mike Galinsky, and Rachel McNally from Sleepy Head are in there. So a lot of the great bands of this era are are in in this video. Joe and John from Spent are both with the submarine, right, I believe. Right. We still have the submarine, don't we? We do. 
Really? Yeah. Where every is time, it? every time it's had to be moved, Georgia says, "Can we get rid of this?" It's like, no. <laughs> it wow. was at my sister's for a really long time, and then when they moved, we had to go. <laughs> Like come, come get your summary. <laughs> but we have it. Yeah. <laughs> the egg guys crack me up every time. Not being able to fit in the door. Maurice, playing the Beatles manager, Sir Christopher Gerard, a name we borrowed uh, as a for a callback on our. Uh, I can hear the heart beating as one inner sleeve. Uh, the uh, original soundtrack to the Broadway musical Heroin, as produced by Sir Christopher Gerard. It's a great name. Like it reeks of show business power. But here, where the Beatles manager is letting you guys know that they are that they are going to come see you. I know a lot of actors hate watching their own performances, but my spit take is inept. Very disappointed with the spit take. And Georgia starts to laugh at it, doesn't she? Uh, Oh, I no, oh, no, 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 I take it back. She just recoils yeah. like one would. Yes. Georgia, I apologize. There was real spitting going on. Yes, it was, yes, it wasn't CGI. Yeah. Sir Christopher Gerard has returned without the Beatles, but with Marshall Crenshaw. It's kind of like having the Beatles, not just because he's awesome, but because he was in the touring company of Beatlemania. Who approached him? That, that, that to, to, to this day is remarkable to me. I'm pretty sure I, I did. But I remember ma uh, making a, write, writing something or making a phone call or something and being very, very yeah. nervous. Okay, so here's Tom's big scene where he's introducing us. I always enjoyed that line, the Tom, the Tom Sharpling line, a band you're probably gonna like. Was that yours still? Where, where did that come from? I think that was in the script, I will say, I think. You know, so many details right. that people imp improvise, including one, maybe my favorite moment in the whole thing, which is as you guys are coming from the downstairs of the Mercury Lounge, right after you walk by the Eggmen, my favorite moment in the whole video is Maurice as Sir Christopher Gerard, just patting James on the back. <laughs> <laughs> like, that just... <laughs> I don't, there's something about, there's something about that that I just think, just, that this guy, this guy is so supportive of sending you off to be uh, despised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, throwing things at us now. And Alan Licht, God bless Alan Licht for being the only person in the audience who's enjoying us. Our good friend Tim Harris is behind him bored out of his mind by our performance. But Alan, as Maxwell Silverhammer, is bobbing his head. We, we do have um, our guest, Sir Paul McCartney, uh, on the line to join us uh, from, presumably from isolation. Uh, Paul or, or Sir Paul? Oh, oh, I'm actually hearing that uh, Mr. McCartney, Sir, Sir Paul McCartney, is not available. Uh, instead, in his stead, we have Marshall Crenshaw uh, from the Tom Courtney video. <laughs> That's right. Here I am again. <laughs> 25, years, 25 years later, playing along. <laughs> again. Everything's got to be rebooted these days. Marshall, do you have any recollection of of your memory of, of how we got in touch with you to, to make this humble request to be in this video? I, I was trying to remember the backstory to it like who was it that talked me into doing this but i you know i remember doing it i remember going <laughs> to the mercury lounge and doing it that's about all i remember i don't you know and then i got a vhs tape in the mail after the fact i was afraid to watch it a lot of time went by before i looked at it but then i looked at it, i thought this is really funny it's you know, I'm glad I did it. And my my recollection is that as as part of the 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 hardball negotiation, you wanted to be driven. I saw so that. you're saying that yeah. uh, that I that I had that, that I told you I wanted a car service. Is that what I did? Well, that's a very very reasonable <laughs> yeah. request. But, but you were coming sure, you were you coming know, from like somewhere that. upstate, right? From out of town. Well, 
Yeah. yeah, I was living in Woodstock at the time. So I think I did have to go back to Matador and say, okay, we can have this terrific high wattage cameo that's a great joke, but we're but this car service is not coming out of the original budget. That's going to have to be an over. <laughs> it came up with the goods somehow or another. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. When you eat the vegetables, when you <laughs> poke yourself in the face with the carrot or celery, also a terrific comic moment. I know. I was relieved when I watched the VHS tape. That oh, this is kind of funny. I like it. You know, we trusted Phil to not embarrass us, but still, it was quite a relief to just the unreserved enjoyment we got out of seeing it. Well, I won't talk about any of my videos. <laughs> For a while, Warner Brothers Records pulled all their videos off of YouTube, and so you couldn't find any of mine, and I was really happy about that. So are you saying, then, that this is your favorite of all of your videos? I mean, <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. wow. I like this one much better than I like the ones I did, yes. <laughs> Well, congratulations on the 25th anniversary. I'm glad you asked me to get involved with it. Well, it was, it was very generous of you. It was generous of you, man. Generous of you now. Yeah. Be well, okay? You too. Yeah.